English. Today we are doing line by line explanation with the textbook and this is specially designed lecture for the students of grade 11. Book Hornbill chapter 3rd. We are not afraid to die if we all are together. Okay, so as I shared with you the summary, the short summary, some hard words and the basic plot of the story, you must have wondered through some of the main incident and the story about. But before I proceed technically with the PDF based book form, I brief you up about the story and I hope the same that you all are sitting with the textbook or the PDF based textbook because line by line explanation is mandatory for you all to understand word by word and whatever the hard word will come during reading i will explain you so be very concentrative let's start we are not afraid to die chapter third book hornbill grade 11 briefing you up about the story this story from hornbill textbook describes the author and his family's experience in 1976 as they tried to duplicate the round the world sea voyage made by the famous explorer James Cook 200 years ago in their professionally built ship Waywalker. The sailors encountered strong gales. Strong gales means very strong wind and gigantic extensively large. Gigantic means extensively large waves up to the size of their main mast that forced them to take safety precautions. On January 2nd, they met a massive wave which broke over deck with a tremendous explosion and filled the boat with water. The author, his wife and two crewmen took charge of the situation calmly and took steps to prevent the ship from drowning. His two small children too showed extreme bravery and proclaimed that they are not afraid to die if they can all be together, which is the title of the story. Thus, in this story from Hornbill, we see faith, optimism, strength and sheer courage. Sheer courage means absolute courage. Shown by everyone on board, help them to survive successfully. Moving to the chapter 2. Chapter 2 also you can say chapter 3 as well because I consider the poem, the photograph also as second task. Okay, so you can say it's second chapter as well. We are not afraid to die if we can all be together by Gordon Cook and Alan East. So let us talk about some main content of the story. Notice these expressions in the text and further meaning from the context. Honing our seafaring skills. Honing means sharpen, improving. Seafaring skills means traveling during, traveling during sea, the skills which we are improving. Omnis silence, deadly silent. Media calls, alarming calls. Pinpricks in the vast ocean, pinpricks, prick caused by the pen. A tousled head, injured. Kind of. Okay, so let's start word to word reading. I hope you all are sitting with the book or the textbook, PDF base form. It is up to you. Let's move on. In July 1976, my wife married son Jonathan, six years, daughter Suzanne, seven, and I set sail from Plymouth, England to duplicate the round the world voyage made 200 years earlier by Captain James Cook. For the longest time, Mary and I, a 37-year-old businessman, had dreamt of sailing in the wake of the famous explorer and for the past 16 years, we had spent all our leisure time honing our seafaring skills in British waters. Because he was an Englishman, okay? In this first paragraph, there is introduction of the family members, their age and the dream which they wanted to fulfill of round the world voyage which was made 200 years earlier by Captain James Cook and he wanted to make the same attempt in their own boat of name Waywalker and they put 
16 years of their leisure leisure means the free time honing our seafaring skills means improving their seafaring skills our boat wave waker now this is an introduction full detail description of the wave walker if you are getting a question based on wave walker then this would be your answer our boat wave walker a 23 meter 30 ton wooden hull beauty wooden hull means a watertight body of a ship beautifully built ship so this is a description of wave walker professionally built and we had spent months fitting it out and testing it in the roughest weather we could find they tested the boat as well in the roughest weather they could find the first leg of our plan three years first leg means the first phase one leg five thousand kilometer journey passed pleasantly it was so smooth journey so we sailed down the west coast of africa to cape town this was a destination which went very calmly no problem no challenge there before heading east the moment they started to head heading east we took on two crewmen two crewmen they carried with them one was an american larry vigil and second was a swiss man herb sizzler to help us tackle one of the world's roughest sea because now they were about to enter the roughest sea one of the roughest sea of the world that is southern part of indian ocean moving ahead to the next page on our second day out of cape town we began to encounter strong gales gales are strong winds for the next few weeks now this is a situation when the moment they enter the southern part of indian ocean for the next few weeks they blew continuously gales didn't worry me gales didn't trouble him but the size of the waves was alarming alarming size of the waves means very high up to 15 meters as high as our main mast mast is the tall upright structure on a boat kind of pole you can say so it was so high as high as our main mast december 25 found us 3500 kilometers east of cape town this is the location on the christmas day despite atrocious atrocious means bad quality very bad quality so weather was too bad we had a wonderful holiday complete with the christmas tree till 25 of december everything was going smoothly they celebrated as well new year's day say no improvement in the weather but there was no improvement in new year's day means first january but we reason that it had to change soon and it did change for the worse we expected that it will change but it changed to more worse first it was just bad and then it changed to the worse that is why i always say you that expect be optimist be optimist person but always get ready for the worst expect the good both the way you need to go then you will be able to face the challenges calmly otherwise you will collapse at dawn on january 2 the waves were yes the waves were gigantic gigantic means very huge the waves were gigantic we were sailing with only a small storm zip zip is a triangular stay sail set forward the mast in a ship is the portion the part of the boat and we're still making eight knots eight knots knots is here unit of measuring the speed as the ship rose to the top of each wave we could see endless enormous seas rolling towards as this was a situation means the moment the ship rose to the top of each wave wave was too high even the ship was also reaching to the height of every wave we could see endless enormous sea rolling towards us means the sea was coming towards us and the screaming of the wind and spray was painful to the ears pain painful painful what was yes the screaming sound of the wind and the spray the splash 
of the water was so painful to slow the boat down we dropped the storm zim and lashed a heavy lashed means to hit with lot of force lash means here to hit with lot of force so look at the line one again once again we dropped the storm zim and lashed a heavy mooring rope in a loop across the stern mooring a place where a craft can be made fast so these all the term all the concept which only a traveler of the sea a traveler of the sea can understand very fast okay so these are the technical these loop these mooring zip okay mast these all the all the technical vocabulary of the boat then we double lashed everything went through our life raft drill life raft drill attached to lifely lifelines don't oil skins don't put on means to wear on oil skin special design clothes means heavy cotton clothes waterproofed with oil and the life jacket and weighted now they were ready with the clothing they dressed up well to face all the challenges in this harsh weathering conditions the first indication of impending impending means about to happen the first indication of impending disaster came at about 6 pm of 1st january with an ominous silence ominous silence threatening silence the wind dropped and the sky immediately grew dark the wind dropped sky immediately grew dark means too much cloudy then came a growing roar growing roar and an enormous cloud towered aft of the ship aft is the part near the stern of a ship an area with horror i realized this is author's word because he was driving the he was sailing the boat i realized that it was not a cloud but a wave like no other i had ever seen it was too much big that he had never seen in his life it appeared perfectly vertical and almost twice the height of the other waves double fold more in height with a frightful breaking crest crest means reach the top of a wave crest top of the wave the roar increased to a thunder the thundering sound before the rain heavy rain okay so he is explaining the same situation the roar increased to a thunder as the stern move stern moved up the face of the wave and for a moment i thought we might ride over it he thought that he could overcome from this situation as well successfully but then a tremendous explosion shook the deck deck is a floor of a ship okay again part of the ship tremendous explosion very big explosion shook the deck a torrent of green torrent a fast moving stream of water flow of water you can say here a torrent of green and white water broke over the ship now you can see the ship was broken my head smashed he got injury into the wheel how he got injury this is the explanation and i was aware of a boat and sinking below the waves he was thrown out of the boat below the waves i accepted my approaching death and he accepted that his death is near now and as i was losing unconsciousness i felt quite peaceful the moment he was losing his consciousness he felt quite peaceful how let's see unexpectedly my head popped out of the water he was thrown out of the boat in the water okay so this was a situation my head popped out came out a few meters away way walker was near capsizing capsizing means be overturned in the water tilting situation you can see one to this way then to second way overturn okay 
Wave Walker was near capsizing. Her mast almost horizontal. Mast horizontal. You can understand the situation means fully slant, fully tilted situation of the ship. Then a wave hurled her upright. Hurled means throw with a great force. Hurled her upright. Then a wave hurled her upright. My lifeline jerked. Taut. Taut. Pull tight line. Pull tightly. I grabbed the guardrails. How he protected himself. He just grabbed the guardrails. Took support and sailed through the air into the wave walker main Boom, boom, again the pole that controls the angle and the shape of the sail. First he was thrown out of the boat. Okay, and then the wave was too large. It was just uh, too horrible. Okay, and it changed the shape. Means the uh, tilted position of the boat ha helped him to come to the boat once again. Be even though he accepted that he will no more alive. But... He decided, he determined and he grabbed the guardrails and saved himself and got back into the wave walker successfully. Subsequent waves tossed me around. Tossing means moving here, there, both the way. Okay, around the deck like a rag doll. Rag doll, a doll, ragged condition like a doll. This way, that way, this way, that way. My left ribs cracked. This was the injury he got my mouth filled with blood bloody mouth and broken teeth this was the situation physical situation you can understand how painful it was somehow i found the wheel lined up the stern for the next wave and hung on somehow he managed the wheel the steering wheel he found it lined up the stern for the next wave means made himself ready to face the next wave Water, water everywhere because the front portion of the boat was broken badly with the flow of water. So, water was everywhere. I could feel that the ship had water below but I dared not abandon the wheel to investigate. He knew every situation but he just, he was just trying to overcome. Suddenly, going to the next page, suddenly the front hatch, hatch here is door was thrown open and Mary appeared. Wife appeared that time. We are sinking, she said. She screamed. The deck are smashed. The decks are smashed. We are full of water. This was the situation of the boat. Take the wheel. Gordon said to his wife to hold the wheel. I shouted as I scrambled for the hatch. Scrambled means climb for the hatch. Now, take the wheel, I shouted as I scrambled for the hatch. Larry and Hub were pumping like madmen. They were pumping out the water. Broken timbers hung at crazy angles. Broken timbers, the broken flaps, broken flaps or the parts of timber boards hung at crazy angles. Here, there, okay, they were just hanging. The whole starboard side bulged inward bulged swell inward not the outward because of the pressure of the water with strong wind made this damage to the ship the whole starboard starboard here a side of a ship which is on the right side when one is facing forward the right side of the ship in front okay so these are the uh, technical vocabulary related to the ship so the whole starboard side bulged inward clothes crockery charts tins and toys sloshed sloshed means move through liquid with a splashing sound moving means floating floating in the water floating in the water all the things which were fixed somewhere at the right place they were all out because of the drastic condition of the boat i half swam Swim. He was me. He was swimming in the boat. This much the this much water was in the boat. Half crawled into the children's cabin. Where he was moving, he was moving to the children's cabin to see about the children. He asked simply, "Are you all right?" 
Yes, they answered from an upper bunk. Upper bunk means the birth. Upper bunk they both were. But my head hurts a bit. Sue said, Susan said, my head hurts a bit. Pointing to a big bump, big bump. When we get some hurt on the bone and it, swell, it swells out badly. In the same way, there was, an, there was a bump, big bump on the head above her eyes. I had no time to worry about the bumped head. He didn't pay any attention. He just checked that they are alive. That was enough for him to see that time. After finding a hammer, screws and canvas, I struggled back on deck. He got the hammer, screws and canvas because he was about to repair the broken portion of the front side of the boat. With the starboard side bashed open. Bashed open means strike hard, which was properly open. That is why water was getting into the boat again and again. So he wanted to fix that starboard area which was broken. We were taking water with each wave that broke over us. If I couldn't make some repairs, we would surely sink. He simply said that I need to make the repair anyhow, otherwise we would surely sink. Somehow, I managed to stretch canvas and secure waterproof hatch covers across the gaping holes. Somehow, he managed to stretch canvas. Canvas, a strong unbleached cloth, very hard cloth, which is used in making shoes. Especially the design sports shoes. Some water continued to stream below. But most of it was now being deflected. Deflected means here turned aside, means to one side, not it was flowing over there. The water level rose threateningly. Some water continued to stream below, but most of it was now being deflected over the side. More problems arose when our hand pump started to block. Up with the debris floating around the cabins. Debris, debris here, the rubbish, whatever the waste material on the board, it was all collected and floating around the cabins and the electric pump short circuited. Hand pump got stuck, blocked up with the debris, okay, and the electric pump short circuited. So they were helpless now to throw the water out from the boat. The water level rose threateningly, but Back on deck, I found that our two spare hand pumps had been wrenched overboard. So he got, he got two more extra where he kept water, uh, that hand pumps, the two spare hand pumps he got along with the four stay sail, the zip, the dinges. Dinghies and the main anchor. Dinghies are the small boats. Small boat for recreation with mast or sail. Which you see the small boats uh, in the big big boats. Okay. In the same way the dinghies. It is known as dinghies. Then I remembered we had another electric pump under the chart room floor. I connected it to an outpipe and was thankful to find that it worked. He managed one electric pump somehow. The night dragged on with an endless, bitterly cold routine of pumping, steering and working the radio. The night dragged on with an endless, bitterly cold routine of pumping, steering, working the radio. They were working on the radio to get some signals. We were getting no replies to our mayday calls. Mayday calls are the alarming calls. When we are in the danger, then we make only mayday calls that now we are in great danger if we are on board. Which was not surprising in this remote corner of the world. Because why he was not getting all the replies? He was not getting a single replies of his mayday calls as it was remote area, remote corner of the world where his boat was sailing that time. Suzanne had had swollen alarmingly, badly. She had two enormous black eyes and now she showed us a deep cut on her arm. So this is the situation of his girl child. When I asked why she hadn't made more of her injuries before this, she replied, I didn't want to worry you when you were trying to save us all. Then she simply 
said to the father, I didn't tell about my other injuries when you came to see me in the bunk bunker cabin because I don't want to trouble you as you were trying very hard to save us all. By morning on January 3, the pumps had the water level sufficiently under control for us to take two hours. By morning on January 3, the pumps had the water level sufficiently settled the water level under control. Situation was little in control for us to take two hours rest in rotation. In rotation means sometime crewmen, sometime the couple, sometime crewmen, sometime couple alternatively they took rest of two to hours but we still had a tremendous leak somewhere but there was still some tremendous very big leakage somewhere below the waterline and on checking i found that nearly all the boats he found that area as well where he got the tremendous leakage as the chapter is little lengthy, so tomorrow in the second part, I will finish the story properly. But before I sign you off, I just want to tell you the most important lesson which I also got from this chapter while making the lesson plan for you all last year even. And today also I want to share with you people as you are Elamathis, the new students, that we learn from such hazardous experiences. We are face to face with that is not to lose hope under any circumstances at times life presents very dire nearly hopeless situation the situation was hopeless he was thrown out of the boat as well the boat was filled with water children got injuries no signals from the from the house okay from the house from the tower okay the signal was not getting any response but he found his destination Amsterdam he found the island but if one is optimistic only then about finding a solution and overcomes the odds one will always be successful so whatever whatever the situation don't worry at all don't stress out there are two types of stress one is positive one is negative positive stress will force you to find out the solution more inclined to solution but negative stress will incline you more towards the negativity problems so forget about that just move on be optimistic in the life and your every situation will become favorable for you okay so stay protected stay safe till the time tomorrow we will finish the chapter second part i will come up with that okay stay safe goodbye